Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Winemaker Wine Tastings and a special evening tonight. Hi, Joni. Hi. <laughs> We've got some great people with us. Hunter and Joni are from uh, Three Finger Wine Company, and they happen to make the one-time Spaceman that we are showcasing this evening. If um, if you're familiar with the brand, in the past, you may have had the GSM, the Red Blend. It's a Grenache Syrah no Verdure Blend that he's done. Tonight, it's a new vintage. And we are also showcasing a whole new wine that they are making from One Time Space Man. And it's really exciting. It's a Cabernet Sauvignon from Paso. Super excited. Hunter, Johnny, thanks for joining us tonight. How you guys doing? Great. Thanks for having us. Doing great. <laughs> we, live in, we live in Sun Valley, Idaho. So um, it's about 25 degrees, but I probably won't complain to some of the folks on the, who are, might be colder right now. Hunter, you know, Texans. Oh, well, they're having they're, they're, they're it this week. What's that? It was about 50 some degrees in Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah, that's golfing weather. Chris, I went to the park. There you go. That's good. That's, that's awesome. Well, um, thank you very much for the introduction, Adam. We are happy to talk, excited to talk about um, the one time Spaceman wines. Um, I think maybe a little history on the one time Spaceman brand might, might be helpful to understand. Good idea. I'm going to take that as a yes. I think it's a great idea. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I was giving you so, some free roll in there, but yeah, explain a little about one because I know you have a bunch of different labels. I mean, with the sure. Kit Fox and you have Treasure Hunter and so forth. And I think most people know you for Treasure Hunter over the years. It's it's kind of your flagship. So I think it'd be really cool to explain one time Spaceman and its background and all that good stuff. Sure. I'll give you a real quick, broad background. Um, I, I've been in the business for, for 20 plus years. Uh, Joni's been a managing partner for how many years? Like, like, forever. Six. 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 Just six. Um, so uh, we do almost everything you can as a supplier. We, we grow grapes. My father's a farmer. I always show people my hands and say I am not a farmer, um, but I did grow up in that, in that um, business and started making wine from our own grapes 20 years ago. Over time, moved to the North Coast, meaning mostly Napa, Napa Sonoma region, and um, started finding really good lots of wine so now we make wine. Um, we're also what's called a negociant, meaning we buy finished wine for our case in a negociant. We do, we import um, we import pink bubbles from Spain. Um, but probably our, our fate, one of our fate, certainly I uh, we are known for Treasure Hunter, um, which is a purely negociant brand, and we do small releases from that. Um, many years ago, I was introduced to a gentleman uh, in Paso named Mark Adams. Um, Mark is was he is, still is the assistant winemaker for Saxon, um, which is probably the biggest cult winery out of Paso Robles. And um, we got along well and decided to come up with a wine brand together. Um, the reason I was down in Paso is I love those really big, intense um, wines that come from there, from those that hot days, cool nights. Um, Mark uh, in, in, with Saxon um, likes the wet, tends to work with the west side of Paso. <clears throat> so. That's what we do, we've done. We developed this brand called One Time Spaceman. It's not a super romantic story. Um, we were sitting on his vineyard, <clears throat> sitting in, on his porch, which overlooks his vineyard. He's a vineyard owner, meaning he farms his own grapes and makes his own wine. And there's a big holding pond with ducks. We probably had too much wine to drink. And he um, there was a there was a big almost like a farmer's moon where it was like bigger with that that magnified moon and it was just beautiful so we had a good time there were some ducks swimming around in the water and we came up with um really came around came up with the name moon duck for this specific wine um but the brand is one time spaceman and the idea behind that is you um maybe if you're buddhist or hindu you disagree but but you kind of get one time on this rock so to make the most of it and and drink the best wines and, and kind of live life the, the the most um so one time we when we woke up in the morning we basically remembered one time spaceman and moon duck because there was this giant moon and there were all these ducks swimming around we thought that was hilarious so it's um the label is funky it's very uh past robles which is kind of um kind of a uh old hippie kind of deal. It's very California. A lot of these uh, old, old, um, uh, not old folks, but people have been there for a long time. Their families were even in commune, stuff like that. It's a very interesting, cool place. And um, what we were interested in initially was working with these big Rhone um, wines that come out of the area. So we put this, this blend together. It's consistent in that it's always a GSM, but sometimes every, every vintage, we throw a little bit of, um, 
um, something else in there. It's been Tempranillo, it's been Petit Syrah, it's Petit, which is, is Petit Syrah this time. So <clears throat> it's a really fun brand. These these wines should nor, would normally sell for a lot more, but we've got long-term relationships with the um, growers there. And, and they're all from really high-end West Side Paso wineries. Um, We'll talk about the cab when we get there, but maybe the first wine that makes sense is obviously the Moon Duck, which is a GSM and a, and a splash of Petite Syrah. Um, it's, it's, um, this is probably our <clears throat> kind of biggest cult brand. You are correct, Treasure Hunters, the most in terms of volume. We get random calls from across the country saying, I've got, I've had this wine with some friends or at a random restaurant and like, where can I get it? So, yeah, we, we, we have we, quite a few wine shops that have carried it for years and so yeah we've got a nice loyal following um we get calls from steak fancy steak houses looking for this wine i in fact got a, an email a frantic email from somebody in new york um the girlfriend of a homeowner of the homeowner's son who had accidentally broken a 2012 bottle of moon duck and was asking if i had any more yeah well i don't know how the 2012 moon duck is is Tasting these, <laughs> selling these days. Paso wines do not, or I shouldn't say Paso wines in general, but these are big, extracted, have intense wines, big alcohol, but big fruit, big, big flavor that goes along with that. So they shouldn't taste hot. Um, but really voluptuous wines is, is the best way to describe the wines we like to do. And that's what the region does best. Um, they're not going to make uh, soft Pinots or Bordeaux style Cabernets. You're going to get very unctuous, powerful um, wines from the area. And, that, and that's one of the reasons we like it. And the labels kind of match. They're kind of bombastic and, and fun. Um, so, Adam, do you want me to, do we want to, well, some I, of you I, might have the wine in front of, me, front of you. Yeah, and, and a couple of questions just because, I mean, you know, like we obviously, we go through these wines ahead of time. And, and, and I've had this particular wine, like Joni said, there's a lot of shops out there that just, they are always carrying this wine, and I've always carried the past. It was it's it's phenomenal yeah. wine. So just out of curiosity, I mean, I don't know how much people know the difference between Paso and maybe some other areas of California. I know that you hinted on a few aspects of it. You know, alcohol level is around fourteen percent, I believe, on these. Um, Love. So, <laughs> or 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 and maybe it's not. <laughs> But um, yeah. I mean, we taste the wine. Is quite phenomenal. What's the case production of it? How long can people expect to see this? I only ask because, like, I actually spoke to the distributor in Cleveland about this wine. And I know with Texas and a lot of the bad weather that happened, a lot of shipments that are coming out to the East Coast right now are, are hampered because of weather conditions. So is there more rounds coming out to East Coast? Because I know they ran out. Um, and I know people may want to try to find this. So if you could hint on even, like, what you guys are seeing, if you uh, on production levels and whether it's more wines that are going out, and then lastly, we are really curious. Is on the back of your label it says Dolphin Safe. Yeah, yeah it's we're very serious about the dolphin. Um, I'm very so, curious as to what that means, and I was very happy when I saw it was Dolphin Safe. Well, I mean, <laughs> hopefully, you're you're everyone out there is drinking Dolphin Safe wines. Um, it'd be a shame not to be. Um, I'll cut. I'll kind of go backwards on that. The Dolphin Safe. And then get to the Paso thing. <clears throat> Secondly, but the the Dolphin Safe thing. Um, these all are um, from organic vineyards. We don't call it organic because the next release we might make may not. Actually, they're they're this wine specifically is from a biodynamic vineyard. The reason I don't put biodynamic on there is the one the next one we do may not be from a biodynamic vineyard. So I don't want to get stuck saying, oh, what happened to the biodynamic? But they're all very um, environmentally. Um, sensitive uh, farmers that we work with, growers that we work with. Um, and that's kind of the vibe there, especially on the west side, these really high-end, really high-end wineries typically on their vineyards, even if they don't have organic as a claim, they typically are pretty much organic, not necessarily biodynamic, that's like a religion. Um, but the organic side, even if they aren't labeled organic, really good producers, <clears throat> you know, they're not going to let their entire vintage um, be destroyed if they have to add something to it and take care of pests or something like that. But for the most part, the high-end guys, the pesticides, herbicides, fungicides are, are over um, for, for high-end wineries. Um, so we work with those types of wineries and Paso Robles. <clears throat> the one time the, the, the dolphin safe thing came from, actually there's, there's terms in the industry like old vine. Um, that's a made up term. I mean, it isn't a made-up term in terms of it means something, but I can put old vine on a bottle, and they can be two-year-old vines. So um, certain words like that—criteria. 
the Correct. Yeah. There's no criteria, at least behind that statement. So I was actually looking through what's called the, the Tax and Trade Bureau, the TTB, which oversees the alcohol industry, um, like just going through their 200 page booklet for fun, I guess. And I was interested in seeing the things you could say legally without, um, you know, kind of claims you can make. And Dolphin Safe was one of them, and it just made me laugh. So I use Dolphin Safe, but it does mean something. It means these wines are very, you know, environmentally friendly. They're grown, the grapes are grown properly. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of things out there, a lot of push out there for truth and labeling. Um, I am actually for that because our wines can can basically um, are made up of grapes and water and um, a little bit of natural sulfites added. That's not bad. There's more sulfites in a banana than a bottle of wine, everybody. Um, but maybe you have sensitivity to it. Um, I'm sorry if you do. Um, so the dolphin safe thing was just kind of fun and it jived with the brand. And it does speak to the fact that these are very um, um, green. Um, well, I shouldn't say green's a bad word in wine. Very um, <laughs> environmentally friendly produced wines. Um, Talking about Paso Robles as a specific region, um, Paso Robles wasn't really uh, on the map for quite a while, kind of with California in the California wine history. It was kind of known for Zinfandel, almost like Lodi. Um, it's kind of known for white Zen and 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 uh, big bulk wine production. Over the years, a lot of producers really find. Um, into the right varieties, varietals to grow. And I've done a good job doing that. Um, I can't remember what year it was. It was probably eight years ago where Saxon actually uh, got number one wine in the world for one of their wines. And that really kind of cemented Paso on the map as the number one wine in the world. Um, you know, that's those are all subjective. But if you're number one wine in the world by spectator, you at least have to acknowledge that they're probably doing something right. Um, so the wines... It's a warmer area. The west side tends to have um, some more uh, mountainous, different soils and kind of um, alluvial fans, if you will, that go out. Um, so you get different soils and you get um, very ancient soils. Um, it's very hot and it, it gets really warm and then the temperature drops a lot. So big variation creates that um, bombastic, big, big component of the wine without it being sort of flabby, without it just being one dimensional. The wines are big, but they have a lot of flavor and they keep going and there's um, a lot of um, um, complexity in them. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, the history of Paso was initially not that great for wine. It was just kind of a, a central California type place that produced a lot of um, a lot of wine, but not necessarily a lot of quality. In the last um, you know, 20 years plus, um, they're now known for as one of the excellent pr producing regions. And we love Paso. We do a lot of Paso wines. Um, um, and, and it's right there. It's not, it's funny, you know, people always want to compare things to Napa, which is understandable. I would argue that um, Paso Robles demolishes Napa for Rhone varietals, um, but they also do some other great varietals like Cabernet. Um, they just tend to be bigger, more intense, powerful wines than than kind of maybe, and there's some big ones, of course, out of, out of Napa, but those tend to be a little leaner, um, whereas some of our, our Spaceman wine have pushed six, almost 16% alcohol and you don't, they aren't hot. Um, so big wines, beautiful, if if no if if you haven't been to Paso Robles, I get the question all the time. Hey, I'm my family's going, me and my family or my wife or whatever are going to Napa. Where should we go? And I'm happy to give them a list of places that I recommend. They're a little off the beaten path. Number one, I always say, you know, San Luis Obispo, meaning which is kind of uh, um, uh, really the, the region of of um, <clears throat> Santa Barbara, Santa Maria, that type of area, and then more inland, uh, going to Paso Robles is a really great place to visit. It's there's good restaurants, you know, there's nice places to stay, but it's not as blown up as Napa is. So, you know, when you go to a tasting room, you're not really taking a number and standing in line and having limousines and vans get out with people rolling out. <laughs> not that that's not bachelor fun. Parties. Yeah, yeah, bachelor parties. Not that that's not fun, but it's a little more, um, it's probably what Napa used to be like, you know, 30 years ago, maybe even 40 years ago. The other place I recommend, of course, to visit is the Sonoma Coast because people forget the Pacific Ocean is there and redwood trees and things like that. But um, yeah, Paso's, Paso's a remarkable area. These wines are dolphin safe. Um, so, you you know, there's no flukes or um, flippers, I guess, um, <laughs> harmed in the making of these wines. Hunter? Yes, ma'am. 
quick question. Do you think that you will be keeping the one-time space man exclusive to pass our fruits or bringing in um, fruit from other regions? Very good question. Um, it'll remain a Paso, Paso Robles wine. Um, that's really what it is. You know, um, the label, this is this very much, I obviously can't see, there's no open. But this, the label, this is very much like Paso looks. This is actually based on some vineyards there. I mean, there's not moon ducks and spacemen and, and all the crazy stuff on there. But yeah, it's very much going to remain a Paso wine. The, the, we used to do um, a few, we've done a few single vineyard releases at a Paso. Um, you can recognize them because they have big swashes of color. <clears throat> this is um, this is a single vineyard, actually wine. But but yeah, we, we have <clears throat> the Moon River. Yeah. But we haven't done um, a lot of those. It's really just been Moon Duck in the in the Rhone blend. Which it's is been so popular that we um, really wanted to find another option to start having as a, a repetitive brand. Mm -hmm. um, so and, and so that's when we started searching for a Cabernet. Yeah, we started searching for Cabernet. I mean, I, I love Cabernet. Uh, Cabernet's number one wine in the world in terms of sales, and they do a really good job of it in Paso. As much as I um, talk about the round varietals, which I do think they do be as well or better than anyone else in California, um, the Cabernets that come from there are on the same level. They're just different than what a lot of Cabernets, um, the, the, some people expect from California. I guess. I guess it's almost what people expect from California. They expect big, powerful, intense wines and Paso's, Paso's um, you know, ca place for California on steroids, basically, yeah. um, with, with the power of their wines. So good question. Um, I love questions. If anyone does have, have any questions. Um, we, 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 I mean, we've got our chat going. So as things starts popping up, the, the one big thing we keep saying is. And I quote. Let's just read it. I buy my booze based on the bottle. The artwork on both of these bottles is stunning. Oh, well, that's, that's, we love, to hear that. we love hearing that. Yeah. I mean, we have fun doing it and produce, uh, developing it with the artists and things too. So yeah, this well, is an artist. About it. I mean, you know, I mean, I hate to say it, you know, if you're on the retail side of the industry, a lot of people come into a retail shop and they buy wine based on a label. So it's just the way it is. I mean, it, it, it's a huge selling point. So having pretty awesome looking, you know, artwork, it's it's going to help sell wine. We just want the art to reflect the quality of what's in the bottle. So that's why we um, invest time and creativity, creative energy in, into uh, developing the labels as well. Yeah, this okay. is a fun artist. And does have a one time space man tonight, and they weren't able to grab it, but they're still enjoying our tasting. This is what it looks like. Can you feature the dolphin safe on the back? And it yeah. is, it is dolphin safe. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, it's, it's, it's a really great, great bottle of wine. wine. Sorry, go ahead, Adam. No, I was just saying, it's a great bottle of wine. I mean, I, I love I, that's a if you're looking for just a good red blend, and this it's it's a meaty red blend. So, food wise pairings, do you guys have any things that you? particularly like to pair this stuff with? Um, I hate to say it, this is a really good, we drink, I drink in my house uh, more, if I'm drinking red and I enjoy all the colors of wine, um, I drink more of this than anything else because it does, it's great on its own. It holds, it's, it's, it's kind of a porch pounder, if you will, but it's really good with a lot of different types of food. I live in Idaho, which can, I can explain that. Um, I go back and forth to California a lot. We have like a lot of wild game here, and duck, it's, I shouldn't I, say. I did Indian food with a Madras lamb the other night and we had it with that and it was- It stands up to- a spicy, like rich. It stands up to big yeah. flavors. So big meaty, meaty flavors. Um, there might be some vegetarians on here, um, red sauces, things like that. Um, but yeah, big, intense flavors, wild game, lamb. Um, but I'll be honest with you, I have three kids, so we eat a lot of pizza and cheeseburgers and stuff. And it's awesome with that. So it doesn't always have to be something that Master Chef Joni um, <laughs> whips up. And she, she is a really good, really good chef. Um, it, but it's you really know, food friendly for the family. So if you're just sitting there at home, just, just brewing up a, a normal family meal, it doesn't have oh, to get. It goes with everything. It's good with chicken fingers and french fries too it's, it, but but it's definitely you know meat dishes big big hearty dishes um yeah yeah that's that's kind of that's kind of the deal 
The, the, the wine's phenomenal. It's kind of, it's, and obviously, it's nice understanding the, the differences between you know the grapes that are going into it. Do you guys look for anything in particular when you're when you're finding these wines? I mean, I know you've done a one-time spaceman for a little while, this GSM blend. So, is there specific things you're looking for each year? And are you working with the same partners, or do you kind of like mix it up a little bit? Or it's full of partners that we've worked with off and on like throughout a, the same a, a small cup full of producers. It's yeah. basically three producers that we work with um we're looking for it, it's it goes sometimes there's more grenache um or more muvedra than than syrah those those kind of go up and down 17 was tempranillo had had, had a lot of tempranillo had a, a chunk of tempranillo in it so no we know what these Pinots, I mean, yeah we did one with Pinots, if you've ever heard of that varietal um the, what we're looking for with with our partners there or our farmers there um, is consistency. Um, most of these, all three of them that we work with, all get ninety five pluses for their wines. We're not. I don't really care about points. I know I should. I know some of my distributors are on there, and they're like, care about points, go get points. Um, but the uh, the producers we work with are just are really good people and really excellent, excellent farmers. Like I said, um, two of the three are biodynamic, the other one's organic. Um, so they're doing every single thing you can in the vineyard in, in their in their prized um, areas to uh, maximize the quality of the grapes and the, and the quality of the wine. Um, so I guess I guess that's consistent. You know, it's nice to have three because because sometimes um, someone someone might have a little bit more of a problem with say their Syrah vineyard or their Grenache vineyard. But um, we do always take it from one producer. All of these these three farmers all grow Grenache and Syrah and Muved. Um, the Petit Syrah came from a different, actually a different producer. We, we, we do take little, we like taking the GSM. Traditionally, when we first did it, the reason we did that is um, Mark Adams, who was the original winemaker there, and who was a partner on this, he's moved on to bigger and better things. He has a winery called called Ledge, uh, Ledge that you should seek out and find. The wines are phenomenal. Um, but when he first did it, he, we sat down with the final blends and we went through and he said, I'm going to add a little bit of Tempranillo to this. And I said, no, I don't want a little Tempranillo in it because I want it to be a pure GSM. So he's like, okay, well, let's try the last two. And we tried them. And I said, yeah, I told you this one's the best. He goes, yeah, that one has a little bit of Tempranillo. So I had to eat crow a little bit. And since then, um, we always add a little dash of something there. It just, it just mixes it up a little, a little bit. Um, and I mean, the profile of it stays pretty true, um, but it, I just, we just also think from vintage to vintage, it's kind of fun to mix it up a little bit. Yeah, you're not going to get a lot of variation. I mean, if you like One Time Spaceman and you had it five years ago, you're going to like, I mean, I can't, you're probably going to like the, this one now. Um, it's very consistent in, in terms of style, but um, yeah, we do work with three different, three different growers, um, um, and we have since, since we started it. Um, but again, they're all West Side Paso um, folks. They're um, all big, big. They, typically, their wines sell for a lot more than what we're selling them for. But we always want to be. We always like to be known for um, value. No one is ever um, who's going to try to sell you some wine is not going to say value, even if it's a five hundred dollar bottle of wine. But I've seen some amazing value claims. But um, you know, the quality of this for the price um, should absolutely destroy. I just did inch up slightly this year, but yeah. the first time in over 10 years. Yeah, the fires were a real problem in California um, and, and affected prices and, and did a lot of, obviously, damage. Um, so you might see wine prices eke up a little bit, especially out of the North Coast. Um, we try not to do that. Um, we've, we've, I think we've raised our prices once in 20 years, so we're pretty proud of that. Well, maybe twice. <laughs> Only once since I've been around. <laughs> Well, I mean, I gotta be honest. If if anyone here doesn't understand exactly how the Moon Duck was made, then they missed out. So please go watch the show again because there's awesome details on here. So we were, I mean, it's really, really hard to try to take all that information and just go and put it in your head. So I do remember, yeah, porch pounding wine. Porch <laughs> pounder. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Goal with every wine that we make. <laughs> yeah, there's a term gulp. Um, or, I'm sorry, quaffability in the industry and. <laughs> Wines are quaffable, meaning they're very drinkable. Um, these wines are very drinkable. I don't always want to sip wine and have to think about it all the time. I mean, if you're watching this, you're obviously in a wine. It's tasting. So you're obviously tasting. So you do have to sit and think about it. And that's one of the reasons why I like to do it. 
because we're in this industry and we love that. But sometimes I want a big mouthful of wine and I want a big mouthful Absolutely. of flavor. And these these wines, you're able to do that. They're they're low. The acids there's there's acidity there, but it's it's not um, overwhelming. And you can get a big mouth. You know, you can take a. I like the, the quaffability term. I like the term gulpability. Um, you know, trademark gulpability. <laughs> Uh, um, but these wines are gulpable, um, and you don't have to enjoy them that way. And I'm not telling people to not promoting, oh, not promoting <laughs> drinking two bottles or whatever, but this wine will sneak up on you. This is one that, um, will open up when we're working together, not working together, but when we're at dinner or, or, or working together. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And this is work. <laughs> we will go through it. Like a bottle goes like that, where you're almost like, did we spill some? Was that half a bottle when we started? It's just, it really goes down easy and it's smooth. Yeah, I mean, I, we're sitting here drinking it. Honestly, I think the wine is extremely approachable. I don't think it's over extracted. I think it's got really good balance to it. The finish is long. I mean, it's it's just an all around good wine. Whether you're just drinking it solo or you're drinking it with snacks, I could see how you could sit in your backyard and just, and just get into a bottle. But at the same time, if you're having dinner, this is going to pair very well with a whole bunch of different ideas. So, I mean, yeah. to make a wine that's that well rounded, that's that's called success, if you ask me. Oh, well, thank you. It's hard to do out of Paso because you almost have to tone it down sometimes and you tend to start chasing bigger and bigger. You can start chasing these bigger and bigger wines and eventually, you know, they're so cloyed. They're so really one dimensional. And we definitely one of the things we do talk about consistently with all of our brands is balance, um, as all wines should have balance. So certainly we have a brand called Mumbo Jumbo and it's two elephants sitting on a teeter totter. So you can still be big. Right. You can still be big and intense, but as long as you're balanced with acidity and fruit, um, you know, some of those kind of uh, key, 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 yeah, See, some of those key, nice display, Kristen. So some some of those key words that we know out there. But yeah, thank Thank you, Adam. I mean, it's it's one of my favorite wines that we make. Um, it's it's definitely one of our customers favorite wines. And, um, you know, we've been doing it a long time. We're, we're really proud of it. And every year it's it's. Um, a labor of love. And that's why we decided to do a second option for everybody. Yeah. Would you like uh, me to talk about it? Are going to get to try the Cabernet now? Yeah, can I get a transition? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So this is our first release of Moon River. Um, the labels, I have a picture, but the, the label's a little bit different, but it's very consistent with the, with the, um, with the brands. You're going to recognize it. You know, the the, the one-time Spaceman will always be black and white, um, but with any of the other releases we make and future releases we may do, we'll, we'll add a big swatch of color. I'm actually colorblind. Um, I'm in charge of color. So Joni's in charge of color. So if you don't like the color, it's, it's Joni's fault. Um, but I was told this is like blue and red or... Uh, it's a gradient. <laughs> it's a gradient. It's a gradient from violet to red. There you go. So... Um, um, I'm not like blind, blind. I know there's some color there, but I can't really define them that well. And this is so, the first year that you guys have done this one, correct? Very oh, first, yeah. first release. First yes. Release. So some of you are the first people to try it. I mean, it was just released. Um, yeah, ago. two and a half months ago. So um, we do release wines um, that are ready to drink. So that you know, a lot of people ask me how long can this seller. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't sell it past seven years. Um, that's, that's, this is a, these are big bombastic, not a ton of acid that's going to hold it forever. And most Paso wines, um, I mean, I, I was fortunate enough to drink a bottle of, of the number one Saxon wine with Justin Smith, with the, with the winemaker. And, um, um, you know, I said, how long is this going to drink? And he kind of winked at me and said, not, not forever. And I said, well, I know not forever. That means six or seven years, frankly. So th these are not. Paso wines typically are not wines you want to sell for a long time. All of you are going to come back at me and show me examples of ones that do sell really well and get better with time. And that's that's definitely the case. But these are pretty big wines that move move quick. And through a couple of customers in the obviously Kansas and Oklahoma area this week, we found out that they can withstand a little bit of cold. <laughs> Yeah, this Adam, your point on the cold, it's it's really been tricky. It's it's slowed down pickups uh, from our warehouse, things like that. We shipped, we actually shipped, um, you know, some direct to consumer um, for this uh, for this for this event, event. and, if, and a couple of longer than we expected because of the cold, and then had a little some. Some of them were actually pushing corks, meaning the cork was pushing up, so those got really cold and then warmed back up. Uh, um, 
it's the, okay. Heat's really what you don't want with wine. You don't want wine to freeze. Um, you don't want wine to get too cold for an extended period of time, but it shouldn't, it, they, they should recover pretty quickly. Heat, on the other hand, if it gets too hot, as, Sorry. as many of you know, um, I, I've gone, <clears throat> people ask, people have asked me over the years to come look at their cellars and tell them what they should drink now and what they should save. And I've seen like wraps of beautiful wine with the heating duct, right? You know, the, the, the vent right underneath it blowing into the wine. I'm like, well, drink this one first because these have all been roasted for years, I'm guessing. Um, but anyway, jump into the wine a little bit. Um, this is from the Adelaide district, which is another one of the west side. Um, Paso was carved up into a lot of different appellations. It almost was gonna kind of be a west side, east side. Um, Appalachian split, the east side folks really didn't like that. Um, they have a chip on their shoulder. And that being said, we've also, we've done one release of, okay. and it was called Ohana, yeah. and it was, it was a single vineyard release, and that was from the east side. So I'm not trying to bang up on the east side, just in, typically the west side is, is more of like the Oakville or St. Helena of, of Napa or of Paso Robles, if you will. So um, frankly, this is, this is as, as big and yummy as this wine is. And people make fun of me. I love to use the term yummy for wine, but these are yummy it's wines. a requirement for our wines. Right, they have to be kind of, exactly. They have to They have to have a yum factor. Um, so this is actually just above 14%. Um, one of the things, I, I, this does this does have a little bit of petite straw and a little bit of Malbec okay. as well. Um, Very small, very small. Yeah, but, but you, you might get some of that in there. Um, that's what the, um, the wine- Go ahead buffers it a little bit it kind of refines it a little bit the, it adds some color and it adds um the, the petite sera i think adds even more drinkability and the malbec kind of adds, adds some shoulders to it i guess if you want to try to add shoulders to cabernet um <laughs> but you know i mean some of the some of the 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 um description descriptors we used were uh obviously black cherry i shouldn't say obviously but black you know black cherry from that region is definitely uh, consistent strawberry pie, kind of Carolina smokehouse. I get a, I get a, um, um, kind of a savory, meaty quality um, that I really love in wines. Um, and uh, black currant, a uh, little espresso, a little milk chocolate. This the, people sometimes confuse uh, mal ML malolactic fermentation with Chardonnay. Well, not confused, but they assume it something that goes with Chardonnay and makes that's what makes it buttery and oaky or buttery, and that's true. Um, red wines also go through malolactic um, fermentation, and it adds to me um, a uh, smoothness or runness to it. Um, it's not, you know, it's, it's it's a little bit different than that creamy component in reds, but this is this has that, and that's something that we will consistently do with this wine. This is a wine that we're going to sell out of and not just be able to snap our fingers and, and, get, and, get, and get more, but um, we will consistently do it. It's just when it's gone, it's gone. One time Spaceman, we try to make enough to get through the year. Yeah, yes, and there's a chance that there'll be a little lag between um, releases of this. Um, and then just like the moon duck, it might have kind of the same personality, but like with a little different kick here and there for from vintage to vintage. So yeah, there should be, you know, there's people talk about they want consistency from a wine they love. And of course, uh, you know, um, I want uh, if I go to in and out, I go to in and out burger because I know I'm getting in and out burger and that's what I like. Um, that being said, from vintage to vintage, there should be variation. If there's not, then you're talking about more kind of Franken wines. You're talking about more yeah. mass produced wines that contain other stuff like wine flavored wine drink to make it all taste the same all, all the time. So very, some variation from vintage to vintage is a good thing, right? I mean, the grapes uh, had different had a totally different growing season, um, different amount of solar energy or sunlight. Um, the whole terroir, you know, is kind of a, a, a moving, evolving thing. So finish to finish, there should be a difference in my opinion. But yeah, consistency is is a big thing and this wine will be consistent. If you like, if you like the 2018 Moon River, you're gonna like the 2019 Moon River. Um, but this is this is one of my favorite releases we've done in a long time. Um, we We've had opportunities to do other Spaceman wines, um, but this this just kind of we, sat us back. We, we buy it and we're finally like, oh yeah, this is it. This is the one we're going to actually do a cab with. Yeah, yeah. So um, Cabernet is 
I should say, obviously, is is the is the king of of red wines. I would say Chardonnay is the queen. Um, it's not sexist. I have three daughters, business partner. Just just they're kind of the king and queen, and um, that hasn't changed for quite a while. Um, and pa and Paso does a very good job of of Cabernet. They, big reds is is and they do a, they they do a great job with whites too. A lot of Rhone whites come out of there. You, I've seen some pretty good Chardonnays, but um, Rhone Rhone and Cab and then. Some funny, funky Italian varietals do great there. Um, they call those Calatals. Um, those haven't done so well in the market over the years, and no one's been able to truly capture that. But um, we like the Rhone Valley, and we like uh, we like Burgundy, and we like Bordeaux. That's that's for sure. And Spanish varietals too. Give you a teaser. Speaking of Spanish varietals. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're here to talk about Spaceman. We do have the we do have the Treasure Hunter line, um, the, new, the new Treasure Hunter International line, the new tre Hunter, tre Treasure Hunter International, and we are getting ready to release a red, uh, a, a red and a white, and they're both pre rots um, from Spain. So those are kind of cool. Just something that's coming down down the chute. Mayish. Yep. Yep. And we're very very excited about that. But in terms of in terms of Moon River, um, you know, uh, Joni came up with the name. Um, I think it was great. It matched. It matched the label. It matched what we're doing. Same artist. Um, you've still got the Moon Ducks taking the wine up to the uh, mothership uh, to be made into wine. Very funky. So, quick question: We were we were just chit kind of chit chatting about this. I mean, you know, Kristen brought up the idea of understanding that AVAs all have different rules on percentages of of varietals. So, Kristen was like, "Oh, you know, how much Cabernet is in this?" Like. You know, is Paso different than other AVAs? I mean, because you said you put Petit Syrah and Malbec in there. So we're kind of curious as to how much Cab is in here and what the rule is. Paso rules different than other places? I mean, no, oh, really good question. So <clears throat> there's different um, for varietal for to say it's Cabernet Sauvignon or to say it's a Syrah or Chardonnay, it has to be at least 75% of that varietal. Um, that's this a is over 80%. Yeah, this is over 80% cab. It's roughly about eight, eight or nine off the top of my head. I, I know I should know, but it's yeah. about eight or nine percent of Malbec and, and eight or nine percent of Petit Syrah. Um, so, um, for it to be from that Appalachian, uh, I believe 85% of it. I mean, this is 100% from the Appalachian, so it's, I don't have to do any math. We typically do that. We typically don't, um, do things from different AVAs mixed? No, I mean, sometimes, well, in Napa, sometimes you'll get into where it'll be some from St. Helena and some from Oakville and some from Valley Floor, <clears throat> Napa and things like that. It's also from the same vineyard. Yeah, yeah, from the same, from the same producer, vineyard. same vineyard. Um, this is all from the same producer, two different vineyard sites uh, that they have, right? And even though they're- The same district. Same district, same Adelina. So, but so, um, some of those rules, it has to be, I believe, 85% from the AVA. If it's single vineyard, I believe it has to be 95% from that vineyard. Um, there's those kinds of numbers. Not, the rules aren't different in Paso Robles than they are in any other um, appellation. So California is an appellation, yeah. right? And then you've got Paso Robles as an appellation, and then you have sub-appellations. And in this case, Adelaide is, is one of those, just like in Napa, which people know a little bit more of those because those appellations have been a while. You have California as an appellation, then Napa is an appellation, and then sub-AVAs sub like like Oakville or St. Helena or, or Yontville, um, what have you. And then within that, you have single vineyard releases sometimes, and that, that's just saying that it comes from one specific vineyard. Um, those are very sought after. Uh, frankly, I think a lot of the times, you know, it's, it's like a painting with a lot of different colors. It's not a bad thing to take uh, some, some mountain grown um, Cabernet and mix it with Valley Floor Cabernet. You kind of are painting with a couple different, a few different colors there. But we, we are pretty strict. We're, we're very strict in terms of we don't really mix. We, do, we don't mix Appalachians. Um, we do one wine. Uh, that's a Cal that's a California Appalachian, and that does come from coastal vineyards. So that does come from a few different places. Um, but when you're talking about this type of quality, in my opinion, you're not going to mess around and pull something from this Appalachian and this Appalachian. Um, so Paso's Paso's a, a pretty pretty old um, AVA, and the newer sub AVAs are only really a few years old. It was kind of a big deal when they did that. I don't know how well they're going to catch on in terms of. AVAs, it just takes time and it takes 
the producers in that appellation to market that appellation. Lodi is an example of an appellation that used to be known really for, for white Zen. Um, and they've done a really good job improving their vines and getting the right uh, varietals there. They still do really good Zinfandel, by the way. Um, and so does Paso. But um, they've spent the time and money and resources to promote that region as, as, a, as a great uh, region. And they've really brought it up. business side we, we understand i'm a fan of lodi i'm really a fan of all the region most of the regions of california i don't go much farther south than paso robles and that's no offense to anyone farther south in paso that's just kind of where i you have to live in marketability. yeah marketability and 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 just what we're looking for and style and quality but i think mo most of the avas do a good job if they're growing the right varietal I went to, and I'm kind of digressing, but I went to uh, Lodi um, right after um, a movie came out that made Pinot Noir very famous. And there was a Pinot, Pinot Noir um, vineyard there. And I was kind of surprised for Lodi. And I was like, gosh, you know, you're growing Pinot. And he said, oh, I wish this was all, you know, it was a big farmer. And he said, I wish this was all Pinot Noir. I could sell it all day long. So trends can affect quality. Um, Pinot Noir, in my opinion, uh, after after the movie um, Sideways, frankly, which was a long time ago, um, but it did affect Pinot um, and Merlot. And Merlot. <laughs> it hurt Merlot. So Pinot, overall, the quality probably went down to some degree because it was so popular. They were planting it in places that weren't ideal to grow it. And Merlot, in my opinion, has actually come up much higher because they're only growing because its popularity went down. And everything's a trend. It'll, assuming Merlot will come back. I love Merlot. Um, Merlot. Merlot, the quality of Merlot, like, is, is probably better. I go to, I, when I go to dinners, me, um, Joni, Adam, Adam, you guys are getting handed the wine menu all the time. And I love to put things on, on, the, on the table that people aren't expecting. So I very often will take Merlot. People are like, Merlot, and then they start drinking and they're like, oh my gosh, it's so good. I'm like, yeah, it's one of the it's sold out of oldest, well. oldest noble varietals out there, you know. We like them with the crews and things like that. So um, anyway, I, I, I digress and I, I love to hear myself talk. So I'll just keep talking if you don't stop me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have a couple of questions. Right. <laughs> One of the, there's a debate because Adam and I detect a hint of light oakiness. And someone else asked if it was aged in stainless steel or oak. And then another member um, said they missed the oaky flavor. So can you shed some clarity on that? Yeah, so this was used um, with a little bit of new French oak and then a lot of it was neutral oak. Um, so there should be a there should be an oak component in there. It shouldn't be really intense. It should it should add um, it was it was new French, it was fancy. Um, what's that? They just high five. We high five. Yeah. <laughs> Who was right? You got. I was. You were right. Yeah, but it's <laughs> not. A, right. That's right. <laughs> but you're, but you're kind of both I right because that. it's not a lot of oak. It's not an oak oak bomb, it, but it does have a little bit, little bit in there. Again, it was, it was put in neutral oak so it can age in neutral oak and get some of the benefits, but without okay. pulling a ton of the. Um, um, really oaky vanilla components that you sometimes sometimes can kind of overwhelm a wine. So yeah, I mean, uh, oh, I, I, we, we, I like oak um, for most wines. Um, there are some really cool things being done in Paso. They're using um, stainless steel, con old concrete, um, which is something they do in Spain a lot of the times. Um, and then there's some very unique, um, sorry, there's some unique, um, kind of vessels that they're aging wine in there, you're going to run into less oak in, in Paso than you are going to say in Napa. So it, it's not a bad guess that it doesn't have oak. And again, it shouldn't overwhelm it. It's just a, I don't want to say a sliver of oak, but it's, to me, it's just enough. The best oak is oak that you almost, to me, is that you can't, can't you, quite detect. You can't quite detect the on the wine. And that is an easy thing to do, especially when you're working with American oak, although French oak does the same thing. There's actually Hungarian oak. Um, that we've played around with over the years that kind of adds a rustic tannin kind of a rustic component to it um, For the most part, I haven't really worked with Hungarian oak for a while, but we tend to work with Producers that will use both American and French, but most of our producers use French 
Yeah, I, I mean, listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. I was I was going neutral oak at the most. Like I just yeah. figured it was all neutral oak. Like I don't get a ton of it. She picked up a little bit more of it. So kudos to Kristen. But um, dude, this wine's phenomenal. I mean, I've, obviously, I've never had this before. I'm I'm totally digging oh, it. Oh, cool. Um, a couple. You've got great I taste now. <laughs> A yeah, couple well. other questions. Um, Scotty asked if it was Dolphin Safe, and I read the label, so it is Dolphin Safe as well. Um, and then someone else, a few people, and I don't know if you touched on this earlier, but they're they're very curious as to where Three Fingers came from, the name Three Fingers. Sure. So um, originally the vineyard uh, or the, the company was called Kit Fox Vineyards. The reason it was called Kit Fox Vineyards is my – Father's a farmer in the Central Valley. We actually established our own appellation called Salado Creek. We sit on alluvial fan and we we grow really great wine, but it it's it, it can be hard to sell wine from the Central Valley as as high quality wine, and that's ultimately why I ended up working from the North Coast. But my father still we still have fifty acres of vineyard there, and um, now the production went to like four to four to six tons. Um, per acre, which is which is higher than you're gonna see in Napa and Sonoma, but that's as low as we can push it down um, given that area. And now he's doing 11 and 12 ton per acre because he's selling to folks like Gallo and Fetzer and, and folks like that. But the original name was Kit Fox Vineyards. And the reason it was called that is we have an endangered fox on the property called a Kit Fox, San Joaquin Kit Fox. And unlike maybe my great grandfather and a lot of people in that time that looked at those animals as pests, and frankly, you know, they dig up fence posts, they were pests to them. Um, we take a much more, yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> um, or really the freeways are the biggest killer, those types of things. But um, we built PVC pipes um, under the, put PVC pipes under freeways. We built um, bird of prey nests. So we were interested, most, farm, most farmers in California, it used to be very black and white with um, farmers and environmentalists. And now it's really gray. Um, you know, uh, people have gotten a little more um, uh, sensitive and, and sustainable, right? I mean, ultimately sustainability is great for the planet, but it's also good for, for the farmers. And generationally, if you're gonna work on this land, you wanna make sure it's sustainable. So having these critters there was part of it, though we, we, the, the kit fox was, was, was the original name. Um, I, I merged, or I, I partnered with a gentleman um, who I'm no longer partners with now, um, but who had a, uh, and we started a few different brands together, um, including this one. And we we had all these different brands and we were trying to kind of come up with an overwhelming name for it. At the time we had three partners. And so we were like three fingers. We we're going to do, I wanted to do three scoops, but, and really the idea is if you remember like a whiskey pour, like a, you get a one or two or three finger whiskey pour. I guess some of you might get four, but that seems like a glass. Um, but it's the three finger, the three finger pour. So the idea behind that is you're getting more with us. You're getting a three finger pour every single time. Um, we still act, we the partnership has changed and the ownership has changed to some degree. So maybe that part isn't as relevant. But the idea is you're getting you're getting you're getting a three finger pour equivalent every single time you drink one of our wines. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Appreciate the explanation. There you go. Yeah, I've heard everything you can um, with the three finger logo and such, okay. and I think that that entertains me. Um, but we the, all have all of our fingers. Yes. Yes. But 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 that that was really the, the idea, and, and there's certainly a little um, glint in our eye that it was kind of funny in a lot of different other ways. I've heard it all. We don't take ourselves too seriously. We no. take our wine seriously. We just don't take ourselves. Too yeah, seriously. we want we want wine to be fun and approachable, and our brands are fun and approachable. The wines are really really serious, and um, we we don't cut any corners or anything like that. But um, and there's a place for very serious white label with someone's name on it, and you know gold and, and very, very important looking like family crests and things like that. Um, we just want it to be approachable, fun, um, try to bring people up um, kind of the quality ladder um, at, at good prices. Uh, I mean, to me, one of the problems with wine is the more you do it, the more you want the better wine, you want better and better. And eventually- And that's why we've maintained different tiers um, of price points to be able to be accessible to New, the new wine drinker, the seasoned wine drinker, the everyday wine drinker, the special occasion wine drinker. I'm an everyday wine drinker, <laughs> by the way. Um, but that's why we have a very <laughs> short price point. <laughs> Not me. Fair enough. Okay. 
It's um, a new leaf I turned over. Yeah, like like two weeks ago. <laughs> 2000, you, were you around in 2020? I feel like. <laughs> 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 2021, I turned this new leaf over. Very good. Well, good for you. Yeah, I mean, wine, enjoy wine how you want to enjoy it, of course. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah this out, is out of out of most of your uh, your wines, and you guys have a slew: the Treasure Hunter yeah. series, the Mumbo Jumbo series, the One Time Space Band. I mean, for me, these wines are they have a complexity to them that, that not that the other wines don't, but it's just it's above and beyond. Like, I'm kind of blown away on this cab to be honest with you. Like, it takes I'm not I've never been a, a huge Paso person personally, yeah. um, but this is not. For me, it's not like typical Paso. Like the expression of this wine is very like it's dynamic. I don't know. Like I, I, you get great fruit, and I love the fact that you put Petite Syrah and Malbec in it. That Malbec gives it like this almost like earthy, leathery spiciness to it. Um, the Petite, Petite Syrah has got a nice jamminess, which I think people are used to in California wines. They want that big fruit forward wine. So I mean, it's an approachable wine drink now. You said seven years. I mean, I bet it could hold up even longer, but. I think it could. I just, you know, as 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 you know, um, guys, it, wines go. Sorry, wines kind of go like this in terms of quality, and and then it flattens out, and then it really goes down much farther. It's not a bell curve, right? It's right. it's it drops. So I never want to be in that down, like you know, this. So as long as I'm kind of in that first part of the slope, it's good. So seven wines, seven years. I I think it'd be continue to drink great after seven years. But why wait seven years? People, you know, this drink's really great right now. It, will it drink better in a year from now? Yeah, probably. And I haven't been around as long as Hunter, but I have come to know that we have a lot of very loyal customers and I get the best reports from people like to tell me like how like the 2011 is drinking or, yeah. you know, I, I love getting those. We love, we love, um, we love that we're small enough that we have interaction with direct interaction with our clients Joni has one we have one customer but Joni talks to him on a weekly I think he's basis probably here yeah hi mr macklin yeah we, we love we love our customers <laughs> we love talking to them we love the feedback on the wines um you know we listen to it and and it's an important part because um you know we're out we're out there doing our thing and think we're doing it right but we need we need that feedback we do drink a lot of other people's wines um i drink a lot of we drink a lot of our wines because we have a bunch of inventory and um um, we like them, but we we don't just drink our own stuff. We drink a lot of other people's stuff just to see what's going on. We like to see innovation without um, sort of uh, bastardizing wine, but that's okay too. I mean, you know, the bourbon barrel wines I think are very interesting. Um, I, I like seeing that type of innovation. We we haven't done anything like that because we're we're kind of purists. Um, but yeah. yeah. But you never know. I mean, I I thought about it. Um, we, thought so. we thought about it briefly of doing like a bourbon wine. Nick, you can chase trends, but we're really into just making the best wines we can every time. Um, this is not really your average Paso. I would agree, Adam. This is not your average Paso cab. Um, That's what struck us about it. Yeah, I mean, it was it was it take it, it it is it tastes like Paso, but it's it's really a refined. I mean, it's got power. It's got but it's got some grace and it's got some some elegance and some um, um, complexity um, that is not, you won't always see in Paso. If you like big giant jam packed wines, go to Paso, you can definitely get them, but those are pretty one dimensional. And to me, yes. if I'm gonna drink a whole glass of wine, like if I'm drinking that much wine, that's delicious, it's like cake, right? Like I love cake, I mean, who doesn't love cake, but I don't want the whole cake, I want like a piece of cake. Um, this is a nice piece of cake, this isn't just a, cramming a bunch of sugar or a bunch of fruit in your mouth. It's, it's balanced, com complex. It's, it's beautiful. The color's right. It's, 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 um, for us to, we haven't done a, a new spaceman in years and years, um, besides, besides Moonduck. Um, so for us to do it, we, we obviously believe this was really special and that's, that's why we did it. And it's our hope to keep, continue doing a, a cab, but it's we're just pretty, not we're it, just pretty particular. Yeah, we we don't have a spigot that we turn on and just if we need more, we need more. So we do run out of things and this one we will eventually run out of, but we'll try to get more in the bottom. Don't run out of the cab. We like it. Uh, we're all, gonna order now. All good things, you know. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um we, we're trying to get more, believe me. Um I'm a fan of the GSM over yeah. here. 
Yeah, she, um, she lets you are there them. any older vintages available? And do you guys have like a favorite vintage? Not directly from us. Okay. But in some shops. Yeah, you might find some in some wine shops. You'd really have to look. Um, no, we, we, I mean, we, I used to keep a, a library of everything we did. We do so many releases, especially with Treasure Hunter. That library okay. became a mess. Um, so then I cut everything from a case to six bottles. And okay. now I've got, I really don't even, I've got a handful. You know, no, I mean, I might be able to pull out old, um, I know I can pull out some old uh, one time Spaceman wines, but we don't have any available, unfortunately. Um, but check around out there. The 17, in terms of best one, oh gosh. Um, the 16 and the 14. 14 and 16 were pretty good. I would put this up. I would put this in that list. I'm not just saying that because that's what you're drinking and I want you to buy a bunch of it. But um, yeah, the, 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 those two. And then going back farther, um, I, yeah, I think I think it's got a little more refined over time. When we first did it, it was it was really hit you over the back of the head. And I think um, the brand has matured in a sense and it's still power, but we've, there's maybe a little more grace in the wines now than, than six, seven, eight years ago. And Joni keeps pouring me more. And she should because Joni, isn't it your birthday on Saturday? Oh, twenty six. So like, you are owed a birthday cheers. It it slipped on one of our conference calls, and I put yeah. it in the memory. Happy birthday, Joni! Oh, oh yes, birthday, Thank you. Joni. everybody that's watching. This is starting off my birthday celebration weekend. Thank you. Well, happy birthday! It's a big birthday. <laughs> like thirty. Yeah, thirty. <laughs> you guys are great. I don't even remember 30. Um, um, but yeah, so um, fun wines, approachable wines. Um, we're grateful for the following of them. Um, I think that speaks to kind of the fun, the, the, the uh, funness, bad word, but fun, funness, funness <laughs> the um, okay, fun components of, of the brand. For our next fun, funness, yeah, maybe. Um, <laughs> You know, the labels are fun. People do buy off labels um, probably too much, but I also understand uh, that's just how that's how it is. If you walk in and there's a wall of wine, so you're going to buy something that sticks, that jumps out to you. And partially Moon River, if you are a treasure hunter fan and you have been around long enough, you, you'll understand that these guys really were using a lot of Chevy Chase movie references. Yeah. And so, oh, no, no trademark issues there, I'm sure. Yeah, um, we do, like. But that's Moon River is part of the reason I did that one because it, it was a, it was a, it was a Fletch. Fletch if reference. you're old enough, if you're um, vintage enough to, to follow old Chevy Chase movies. So I used to love Chevy Chase, I still love Chevy Chase, but we do weird, we do fun things. Like, and we do inside joke things. Um, because we can, right? We've, it's, it's our business and, and we do, we try to do things that, that, um, make us smile as well. But yeah, we did like, um, Dusty Bottoms, which was, there's a treasure yeah, hunter, which was, oh, uh, Dusty Bottoms was, Dusty Bottoms was, um, uh, Three Amigos. It was his name in Three Amigos. We did one called Mattress Police, which was a, a goofy thing in Fletch. So anyway, I mean, we do, we do, these, these, these Spaceman wines have, definitive names based on some history and what we did. But yeah, we, we play around and do some goofy thing. Goofy's Sorry, good. Us. We're goofy. So Hunter, um, obviously beyond happy that you guys join us tonight because we love hearing about your guys' new wines. Do you guys have anything else on the uh, upcoming exciting list coming? I mean, something that you can yeah. share with everybody? Like, I know Treasure Hunter sometimes comes up some cool stuff. <laughs> 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 We shamelessly plugged the international brand already. Yeah, we do. Um, so we've got the pre the, the the two pre rocks coming at um, a treasure hunter. We have a Napa blend coming in mid March called Centurion. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. It's, oh. a, it's a Bordeaux blend mm -hmm. from Napa. From <clears throat> it's a hundred. It's normally you're it's normally, gonna like that one. It's normally a hundred dollar bottle of wine. It's delicious. Yes. Um, what else do we have? Um, we have a new with the next vintage of uh school night red coming we have night, wait can we stop for a second yeah. yes school night red school night. school night red is the only recurring wine on the treasure hunter yeah wine. like it, i haven't seen names brought back up again this is interesting information yeah well it's been probably for 
since I've been around. So six or seven, seven or eight years. Yeah. So we had a demand from our from the market, from our distributors and customers that wanted um, a treasure hunter that was I, ongoing. I call it the gateway drug for treasure hunter because it's slightly more affordable. And we named it School Night Red because and put a screw cap on it so we wouldn't feel guilty to get it on a Tuesday. So. I have kids, whether you have kids or not, like a school night is like a Monday through Thursday, basically, right? And um, I might have, my wife and I might share one or two bottles of wine, um, or I might share none. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. Um, so so it's it's a wine that goes really well with a lot of different types of food. Um, and it's, that's why it's called school night. It's like a school night wine. It's delicious on its own. Um, it's delicious with a lot of different types of food. And if you have to open two bottles, you're not going to break the bank. And it, what it does in the industry is it gets a lot of glass pours and and it, people like that wine and then go up the line and start drinking more of the Treasure Hunter wines. We actually have Treasure Hunter and then we actually have a brand above that. It's like a reserve Treasure Hunter called Treasure Sellers. Um, That's the white, the fancy white. That is a white. It's got a, it still has a couple, it still has a couple of guns on it. <laughs> but, um, Wine's worth cooling over. There you go. There you go. <laughs> So, so kind of what we have. Uh, the way, real quick on the space. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. On the um, on the uh, mumbo jumbo, we did just release uh, a new Chardonnay. To well, fairly new. Add, added a Chardonnay and a Cabernet. And a Cabernet to that, to that line. So those are those are pretty new to the market. So Lodi Cab, Central Coast Pinot, Central Coast Chardonnay. And those are designed to stay twenty dollars and under. Um, it varies market to market a little bit on what you can um, get them for. Um, and then let's see, on the same ship as the pre-rot, we have another load of our Viva La Vida Rosé Cava, so which good. is unique. It's, so good. Which is, well, like I said, it's the only wine that I think that we should sell in two packs. <laughs> For a bigger bottle. <laughs> uh, and that's unique. <laughs> Hunter, serious question. Is you ever going to bring back the scallywag? Did you say thank you? The Scally Wag. So that was a that was a threat. We actually did. We did um um we did another release from the same winery we got that from. The Scally Wag, I'll go ahead and say because it, it was long enough ago. And if you so if you're a distributor and you distribute it, it's changed hands. Gallo 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 bought it. But before Gallo bought it, um it was it was prisoner and it was a it was a prisoner release. Um we got we got some prisoner before it was, was the prison. Everybody before it was gallo, before everybody. and um, yeah, and, and that was fun and very well received. It was actually better than the prisoner because it was a, just a, it was taking components that they had and, and we blended them ourselves. Um, we have actually maybe bought from that winery again. Um, we try to buy wines from the same folks as much as we can, um, but yeah, this is the reason we buy it yeah. from them in the first place. Exactly. So, because I, I hear this all the time, that scallywag was so good. Like, that scallywag is so good. I know. And we did change up the label. We put like some, like, tattoos on it and some some different changed up the label a little bit. It was kind of a special one, and I knew it would be popular because of that the popularity of that brand. And it, and that was and it, that. And I think it really came out right at the cusp of its kind of from cult to like super popular. Yeah. Yeah. So we got in right at the right time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's great. Now it's now we're it's outpriced for us. <laughs> well, it's a just it's it's just it's more of a mass produced wine. I mean, I think prisoners added uh, they, a white. Yes. I think they have a cab, mm -hmm. um, which I understand. They spent a lot of money for it, and Gallo Gallo is going to skew it out. But um, and I haven't had it for a while. I'm assuming it's it's still pretty good. I, I don't know if you had the new prisoner lately, guys. Not the uh, not the most recent vintage. I've probably got um, I think I've got nineteen and before. I don't have twenty or twenty one. Nothing new. I don't even know twenty one. I'm, really. I'm not a I'm not a Gallo. October, but. Yeah, I'm not a I'm not a big producer hater like a lot of small producers are. I mean, good for they them. Appreciate Gallo. They bought yeah, Gallo. They bought. We we had a brand called Dark Horse that you might see out there. That that was that was a Gallo that was bought by Gallo. Um, and now you can get it in the gas station you work. Now you can get it in every gas station. You can get it everywhere. You get it. And, <laughs> and it used to be a single vineyard Napa release. I do have scallywag in the basement, though, my cellar. Well, yeah. I mean, when we did, when we did, when we were 
owned Dark Horse and made Dark Horse. It was single vineyard cap, single vineyard Zen from Dry Creek in, in Sonoma. Oh, that's right. that's um, and it's okay. It was before your time. I know. It's okay. <laughs> um, and um, um, they were really high end, awesome wines. Those wines should drink great for a long time. I mean, you don't want to hold Zinfandel forever, but um, yeah. I mean, so Gallo knocked on our door <clears throat> as they do sometimes. And they all they did was like, they liked the name. Um, and they changed the label up tremendously. It used to look like an old cowboy's belt buckle, basically. Um, and now it looks, now it has a horse, like a wine glass on its head. Yeah, it's actually pretty. Yeah, it's good. It's actually good graphics. It's just yeah, great wine. <laughs> I think it's great wine if you're selling it and you're a distributor that represents it. <laughs> <laughs> or a retailer. For the price. It's, great. <laughs> it's good wine for the price. It's okay. Well, I mean, we obviously look forward to all the new, crazy, awesome, up and coming wines you guys are doing. So you promise you're going to keep us informed, right? You will. Yeah, and with Treasure Hunter, we do some offbeat um, varietals too. Um, we've done 100% Tanat. Um, uh, I've done uh, Tariga Nacional. Uh, most of you probably don't even know what that is. Um, but that was actually at a Paso. <clears throat> so <clears throat> keep an eye out for some of the more kind of oddball varietals. People trust us um, in Treasure Hunter by... Um, because we we consistently release a lot of different wines, but they're consistently good. So it's always an honor to have people try varietals they're uncomfortable with because it carry because it's in one of our labels. I mean, Rhone blends might sound exotic. Um, they they kind of are out of California, but 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 the reason G GSM is like a term is because those three varietals tend to go really well together. Obviously, Cabernet is not super exotic, although I would I would um, claim that this one is very unique. Um, but yeah, keep an eye out for some of the more funky varietals and blends we do. We don't have any rules in California like they do in a lot of regions like France. I can take a Rhone blend and mix it with a uh, mix it with a uh, Italian blend if I want to. And that lack of rules has 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 been a good thing for California, <clears throat> and that we're able to to really make make um, unique wines. We also don't have rules. Um, <clears throat> Uh, in, in terms of being able, we just don't have the, some of the strict rules that you'll see in Bordeaux and certain in certain areas like that. Some of those international areas are changing. Uh, many years ago, France started allowing what's called chapitalization, which is a fancy word for adding sugar. Um, <clears throat> so it's interesting that the new world has has changed a lot of the old world styles of wine, which I think is is disappointing. Oh, one of the things I want to mention, and I, again, I'll, I'll stop talking at some point, but um, what a lot of these producers in um, Paso Robles that focus on these round bridles, they're kind of always, their hero is, is Chateauneuf de Pop. So they love the Chateauneuf de Pop wines. They're not trying to make wines like that. They, they can't based on where they are and, and they want to do their own thing to give some kind of um, centering of, of what their, their um, Valhalla is, is Chateauneuf de Pop, which is one of, if not my favorite region. Certainly, nuts are super young. Yeah. Now, Adam, I feel like last time we could see everybody, like we don't get to see our, our fans. So that was at my house, and I had my okay. friends over. Um, and we're actually pulling in wine parties here and there just cool. so um, we have more interaction. So for all of you that are watching right now and you're enjoying our night with uh, Treasure Hunter and One Time Spaceman and Kit Fox and Three Finger and everything in between, <laughs> yeah. we'd love to have you join us on one of these wine tastings. If you're interested in hosting a party at your house, let us know, we'll send you a link. We can actually pull you into our live virtual wine tasting. You can ask questions to the winemaker and his associates and it's a super good time, so. Well, I mean, do we have any questions? Do yeah, is there, questions? is there any other questions or, you know, concerns? <laughs> I hope that. <laughs> <so. laughs> My bottle is empty. What, one, of, one of the things I, I will say to everyone listening out there, whether you're a distributor or, or, or you know, uh, uh, a wine drinker or, or um, retailer, restaurant, what have you, <clears throat> I've done a lot of, quite a few, believe it or not, I've done a few of these virtual tastings um, since last March. And, um, you all really do such an awesome job at, at putting this together. It's not just a Zoom call where it's us talking and it's fragmented. Um, this is this is a this is a service that is excellent and it's the best I've seen. And I really I'm not just saying that, you know, but I but I'm grateful for the amount of time and effort. You know, I was getting the comment 
from Adam, like, you know, I'm going to give you a Logitech uh, camera or give you uh, where you can buy it because your camera is terrible, but just the quality of the, of the, of the program that they put together. I mean, I'm just, I just try to not get in the way or we try not to get in the way. So we're grateful for the excellence that you put forward. Well, we appreciate that. I mean, Chris and I both work very hard and, and we're, it's, it's all about growing. We want to bring the winemaker and wineries to the people of this world. It's, it's hard. I mean, not everyone can just go travel to a winery and go check it out, even especially in these times. So to be able to bridge that connection and allow people to interact with the winemakers and the owners and the, and the people that put these things together, is, I think it's I think it's a really cool thing. So, Hunter, I mean, we've known each other for a long time. You have no idea how much I appreciate you, your winery, the wines you make. Joni, you've been amazing. So we really do appreciate you guys being a part of this. And thank you so much. Well, okay. and we like to do it. And I think we're going to try to do another one um, featuring Mumbo Jumbo line yes. um, in like six weeks, two months. Yes. About, about like a month and a half to two months, six to eight weeks. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we'll get on the calendar. So everyone that's out there that's watching, we got a bunch of new upcoming tastings that we're going to tell you about here briefly. Yeah. But um, mm -hmm. we're definitely going to get some Mumbo Jumbo going too. And then I can't wait for Hunter to send me a text message saying, I got a new Treasure Hunter line coming. <laughs> well, we do have the one coming out. Yeah, the, the Centurion's really just and then after, awesome. After that, we'll definitely do one for the international line for the new pre rot I think just because um, it happens to be from Spain that we'll probably feature the Viva La Vida as well, because because that's our... We'll do a Spanish apocalypse it might situation. Be our favorite child. Oh, can I say that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We didn't talk a lot about the Viva La Vida. The Viva, I mean, just just one more quick. Like, it is 100% Pinot Noir. It's from Panetes. It's made like champagne. It's a fraction of the cost of champagne, and it's it drinks it drinks like, an, it drinks like an $85 growers champagne. Um, pink bubbles are are an important part of life, in my opinion. So My opinion as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I drink, I drink Moonduck, a lot of Moonduck. I mean, I drink all my wines, but I drink a lot of Moonduck and I drink a lot of Viva La Vida. Um, not necessarily in that order, but I will mix them, you know, in the same <laughs> night. But anyway, um, I digress again. You know, uh, I don't know if, if any, anyone has any questions or if, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for everyone's time. Um, I urge you to reach out to us with questions. Um, ask for these wines in shops if, if you're um, having trouble finding them. We're in we're in most markets. We aren't in every state, and I'm sorry if we aren't there. We'll, but we've we'll been surprisingly everything. added a few new states um, through the. We're in the middle of the process of adding Maryland, Iowa, um, re-engaging in in Georgia. We just um, we just started in Kentucky. Um, I actually tried to go visit Kentucky. Oh, and it, was, it, was, it was beginning of last week, and we yes. had. I basically went there and turned, I basically went there and turned around and it was frozen and it was it was a mess. So yeah, it's been tough. Was. It's been tough. I'm used to getting out in the market. We were so excited to be able to like have the opportunity again and like, Mother Nature did not agree. But this is this type of format has been amazing and be able to continue to communicate. And I think it's it's not going away. I mean, for, for me to be able to reach out and touch people, this many people, um uh, is a really wonderful I guess that's one good thing that's come out of this is um, not having to maybe fly around as much, um, although I do enjoy it. But this sort of interaction is, is we've done a few of them. I, I might be getting worse at them. I don't know. But, um, but they are. Intrigued. I mean, things are awesome. like coming along. You're, this is things, true. things are going in a different direction. I mean, uh, you're clean shaven now. I mean, I know. You know it's a new honor. I had a COVID beer that was pretty serious business. And my wife told me know, I, I, just a lot a, I just took a peek at our stats. And just you know that we have viewers from nine different states tonight watching this feed. So I love that. Awesome. That's awesome. Well, yeah. um, we're grateful for your time and grateful for your business. Um, you know, we're we're a small little winery. And we want to stay that. We want to stay that way. Um, we 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 love we love our organic growth into different markets and in, in, in the markets but um we throw out specials once in a while but we really want you to encourage you to support your local wine shops yeah. as much as possible sometimes i know that they don't carry every single thing so yes you can come to see us online but um we prefer at any point that i i actually try to um connect you with your closest local wine shop first we're wholesale driven our our partners are our wine shops our restaurants 
Um, that's that's what we're about. I mean, yes, you can buy, buy wine direct from us, buy it locally. It's, it's less expensive, typically. Shipping has gotten horrendous. Shipping's become really expensive, and people don't understand so, how. If you guys don't mind, I'd like to give a little love yeah. to a couple shops right now that that really went out of their way today um, over the past couple of weeks to yeah. support this event. Yeah. Um, one here in Cleveland was Red Wine and Brew and Mentor. Um, great group of people. They brought the wines in in advance. They've been selling them for weeks. We had a bunch of people go out there and pick up their wines. So thank you to the people from Red Wine and Brew and Mentor. And I believe you. you guys had someone, I want to say Kansas, Kansas, Kansas City area. So I would love to give a shout out to them because they supported our event and you guys. And it's it's nice to give a little love back. Wines by Jennifer. Yes. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yep. You guys are our lifeblood. We're so grateful to our wine shops. That, in Parkville, know, Missouri. In Park and, and, the, the, and, and the wine shops, you know, I'm not banging on grocery stores or things like that. Of course, you can go get wines, but the wine shops really tend to, to hand pick. <laughs> yeah, to tend to hand pick, you know, support your, your local wine shop because they're tasting everything that goes in there. You're going to find things that you won't find in, in grocery stores. I understand the convenience of grocery stores, but develop a relationships with your local wine shop. It's kind of a relationship that you'll have for a very long time. The reason Adam and I really know each other is he's, he had a, he had a retail shop and we got to know each other, um, become friends since then. But those types of wine shops, everything that goes in there, they taste, um, they know what's going on. They can talk to it. Um, they get to know you as a customer. The best wine shops I know, the customer goes in and they say, I know what you like. And they fill up a mixed case of, them, of stuff they'll like. And so that's it. what it's about. Yeah. That's how we sure. met. It is. I bought an entire case of wine. An yep. entire case of wine. Look What's at it? you. <laughs> yeah. Is there another way to buy wine? No, um, I didn't understand. He And he carried it out to my car for me. And then I was like, well, this is going to be the beginning of a fabulous relationship. Got to take care of your people. That's it. Yeah. And so that, that kind of one-on-one -on -one, um, getting to know you, you're just, you can't, I mean, I, I know some grocery stores do a good job doing that. And again, I'm not slamming grocery stores or big, big box chains, but the, the small wine shop is the core of our business and um, our friends and the people we re rely on and support. So thank you. Appreciate it. Well, thank you to you guys too. And, I, and we've, we have a few people saying that it's not in their state. So like you said, there's balance, support your wine shops, but at the same time, we can always order wine directly from the winery and that's not a yeah. bad thing either. So to yes. both Joni and Hunter, thank you so very much for being a part of our evening tonight. Wine Down Wednesday is taken up to a whole new level when we got you guys on. So we appreciate you having you guys around. Cheers to that. Cheers to that. Thank you, everyone. Be Have safe out there. To everyone else in Wine World tonight, salute, cheers, and everything in between. Thank you for joining us. We're going to talk to you real quick about some uh, amazing events that we have coming up real quick. And... I'm gonna let Kristen take over right now because she's gonna tell you all about the goodness that's coming. All right, couple events coming up and I will be very brief. Um, next Wednesday, we have Fancy Pants Food Pairings. I'm super excited about. I think we have a celebrity chef coming in, right? We do, Frank Akabuchi from Pranzo Bistro in downtown Willoughby will be handling our Italian wine pairing. Super excited about that. Frank's an amazing chef. You ever had his food? You ever had Pranzo? I have not. Oof, I guess we won't have to change that. Obviously on Wednesday. <laughs> um, and unfortunately, I will be cooking the rest of the food. She will be. <laughs> you, know, just, you just never know what Kristen's going to be able to pull together. You have no idea. Um, so that's next Wednesday on the 3rd. On the 10th, we have a Cab Sauv class, correct? Correct. So we're doing a really cool education class, part of our Wine 101 series. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be doing four different cabs from four different regions around the entire world. We've got Argentina. We've got France, Australia and California. So visit winemakerwinetastings.com. It has the event all the line up there. And then um, we're actually gonna skip the next Wednesday. Well, we Wine have Wednesday. To. We have to because it's St. Patrick's Day. Uh -huh. Yeah, and not only is it St. Patrick's Day, but it's 2K's birthday. Uh, 2K, what's up 2K? Happy birthday 2K if you're watching. Um, and happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. Right, I will be drinking Jameson instead of wine, sorry. Anyway. And then on the 19th instead of the 12th. So we moved Bang for Your Buck from Friday the 12th to Wednesday the 19th, which we will be doing Bang for Your Buck with, um, I think, 8 to 10 wines we're going to feature. And we might even get a little crazy in here on that day. You're going to have a party? I think we're going to have a Bang for Your Buck bash. 
a bang for your buck fast. I'm very excited. Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> so we're getting fancy on the third. The 17th, we're out of here. The 19th, we're doing Bang for Your Buck Bash. And then... And then on the 24th, we wrap up almost the end of March with Buena Vista. Super excited. So exciting. Yeah, Buena Vista, one of the oldest wineries in Napa. The story is insanely phenomenal. They have a count. 100%. I mean, when you have a count, you're pretty big way. Yeah, and the, the history there is just enthralling it is we're, we're excited about that mm -hmm. so we're gonna have Buena Vista we're gonna have a bunch of their wines mm -hmm. and we're gonna have their winemaker so it'll definitely be a winemaker event yes so we've got a pretty pretty stacked uh march coming up we do i'm excited i'm excited too can't wait to see what you're gonna cook next week um me too i like to eat i like to cook it'll be good and we're in good shape yeah we're awesome so by all means tune in remember every wednesday is wine down wednesday it is it's a great day to drink you could take Monday and Tuesday off if you really want to. But. I do. <laughs> she didn't used to. <laughs> <laughs> but join us on Wednesday. So check out our schedule. You can go to our Facebook page at um, Winemaker Wine Tastings. You can go to our website at winemakerwinetastings.com. All of our events are listed on both. And we look forward to seeing you at some of our future upcoming shows. Yes. We good? We're good. We're out of here. Does everyone have fun tonight? I hope you did. Great wines. One time spaceman in the house. We love Hunter. We love Joni. Great people. Um, and look for some future um, upcoming events with them. we got about six to eight weeks, I think, until we're doing the Mumbo Jumbo one. Yeah. So, I love Mumbo Jumbo, so I'm excited. Yeah. If you like Chardonnay or Pinot Noir, those are kind of the specialties on that label. So tune in. We'll see you all soon. Thank you for joining. Okay. We're going to go hang out by the fire and finish these bottles. Good night, everyone. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>